Hello and welcome to replay 24 of Battle for Middle Earth 2 Rise of the Witch King expansion. This is the final replay of uh, this expansion that I have to show. It's a 4v4 on Nandurion. And I am elves, so let's jump into this one. See what it's all about. And then after this, uh, we'll get back to regular Battle for Middle Earth replays, since I am out of these to show. Uh, we have myself as elves here. Um, clutched as the men. Bluff as Isengard and elves as well. We have Light Tower. That is Team 1. Team 2. On the other side of the map, we have Bonsai. Banzai as elves. Candy Rush as dwarves here. FFG Sania as elves. And we have, last but not least, Prop Joe as goblins. That is team two. So it's east versus west here in this map. This map uh, has a few things on it, it has outposts on each corner here. So those could probably be very important as they generate extra resources. There's uh, signal fires, also fire drakes right in the center with the goblin layer pretty close to it as well. Everyone has a cave troll close to their base door. And you see the dwarves getting a munch after next to their thing very quickly. They're going to want to capture this as quickly as possible I'm imagining. So as soon as you get some troops out of here. He's going to put him in here, and he's going to capture it. Elves are getting some pikemen out there very quickly as well. And they're building barracks right here. Another barracks from the, the bat guy. If you're the bat guy, you want to build your stuff up here as well, so you can help defend the front, basically. And goblins are doing the same. So I probably should have been uh, capturing this signal f our outpost here. I yeah, I don't usually play four player free for our four player maps on this map, so I don't know what to do per se. So a little newbie on my part. There is a uh, some elves out from here, some warriors. And it looks like down here, there's a clan steading from Urukai, which almost looks identical, if not identical, to the tavern from Mordor. I think, I think the tavern from Mordor gets removed in this expansion or something. And uh, Wildmen of Dunland and Axe Lords are built from this place, which is a thing from Isengard. It's pretty nifty. So you can build a hillman from a... Which makes sense because Saruman is like the leader of the hillman as well. Not just the Urukai. Yeah. If you've read the books or whatever. They're a big part of Lord of the Rings Online as well. The hillmen are a huge part. <laughs> Working everywhere. Alright, let's jump up here. Uh, yeah, looks like I got my troops a little too close to the cave drill. Not the best play. Not the best idea. Here we got Thillian Rangers. Always a good choice by the men there. And it looks like Green sending more men over here. So they have knocked this down. This has pretty much cut us, cut us off of taking anything. They've also knocked this one down. Even though Blue's captured it. But they have theirs. The dwarves have this one, and the. Who has this one? No one has this one yet. Looks like they're fighting for it. 
Uh, I'm sending Hillman over across the map to fight the goblins. And goblins in this patch are pretty strong still before they get nerfed. Damage wise, so I think they shouldn't have too much trouble here. But they do still have their little tiny life pool, so they're not that good. Somebody has some cavalry already. Cavalry is a good choice. Orange, looks like. So, Orange has uh, the mobility to get around things. If he controls these correctly, he could potentially kill quite a few things. As long as he stays away from these Urkai pikemen. And it looks like we have a Glorfindel here from Light Tower. Glorfindel's a good choice. And a Prince Brand here. Who is the archer hero for the dwarves in this expansion? As if the dwarves needed another hero, am I right? <laughs> yeah. He's pretty good though. Looks like Blue is going to try for a small invasion. I don't think he'll get very far because of all the amount of archers here. And they're also buffed, so that's where I call up. Oh, yeah, there's those as well. <laughs> That alone would take care of that problem. The fact they re they went into cavalry first is probably better for them. Looks like Glorfindel's stealing their outpost, that's nice at least. And there was actually a uh, little small raid I missed, looks like. I may have lost some stuff, I'm not too sure. It looks like I've probably lost... I don't know what I lost. Maybe it's just scouting. He's still got quite a few, uh, he's got two battalions of these things, still. And then he has these ones out here. And it looks like I lose a builder and a farm. Well, tree. So, uh, the cavalry is going to be a problem for me to deal with, it looks like. I think the best way for elves to deal with cavalry would be to get a Glorfindel of my own. Or some cavalry of my own, with a Glorfindel. That would probably be a smart idea. Because uh, currently my composition is not very good for that. But I do need this composition, or at least something along these lines, to defend against the dwarves at least. Because uh, they have two things of pikemen. Having a full group of cavalry would be a terrible idea. And here comes a big cavalry rush led by Glorfindel over here. He could potentially do a lot of damage. We're kind of definitely going to lose a builder and a building. Whatever he's building. <laughs> wall hub. He's gone into emergency wall hub mode just so he doesn't die. And it looks like he does manage to save him. Back up here. Well, uh. Yeah, ouch. The fire drake is putting. Massive damage on these troops. You never want to engage near a fire drake if you can help it. The green comes up from the bottom here. Green having a very powerful army. He has a hero, he has tons of archers, some pikemen. We do have a Boromir, and at level 2 he does get his horn in this patch, not level 3. So he does have it, and he has used it, but he is on cooldown. He doesn't have a knockdown either. So that's not a thing in this patch. Thank god. I hate that knockdown with passion. And my Haldir is going to die very swiftly here. Yep. My army is pretty much dead, and it looks like my base is being raided by the Glorfindel cavalry. Well, so I'm going to lose pretty much everything here. My barracks, all this nice things I have. And green and red are going to continue to push forward. The elves and dwarfs, a strong combo. And losing this forge is going to hurt me quite a bit, I'd imagine. Well, losing everything is going to hurt me quite a bit. So I'm going to be pretty crippled, I'd imagine. 
Green also has our outpost and it has it built, so he's generating extra money. At least Urukai has theirs. And Urukai against this goblin spam shouldn't be too. He should be able to handle this. He does have Gore Kill, who in this patch I believe still costs uh, 3,000. Not positive, but I believe so. Since it basically is patch 1.00 with a expansion on top. And that's how much he is in that. So it's an expensive loss. But it looks like uh, the dwarves and the elves are starting to make a forward base right outside our doors. That's not good for us. Not at all. Orange has actually got a pretty big army just waiting at the base. Goblin archers, there you go. You don't see those every day. We do have a decent defense force from blue and uh, purple, I guess I'm going to call that. We should be able to stop this, especially with Boromir uh, still on cooldown. But somebody did deal with the cavalry, it looks like. I'm not sure who, but I'm now rebuilding. So I can't pretty much, I can't help my teammates here. I'm definitely the weakest link on all teams. I have one battalion of archers, and that's literally all I have in the in the game at the moment. There's a warm tongue for you, for your viewing pleasure. We do have an Aragorn Blade Master against a Blade of Purity uh, Glorfindel, but Glorfindel does not have a chance here. There is two Glorfindels. We have one, and their enemy Glorfindel dies. King Dane is now dying. He's gonna want King Dane dead, losing the leadership on these troops. We should just be able to wreck them. Oh god, here comes an arrow volley. Didn't actually do much. I guess because of all the leadership. I'm surprised Elven Archers took so little damage from an arrow volley. Uh, with Aragorn leading the charge. Oh, there's also uh, Elrond here. Elrond, also an excellent hero. There's a lot of archers here. It's going to be very difficult for uh, these guys to stop us from advancing. Another battalion of archers for myself. If there's a cavalry army coming, uh, oh man, I feel sorry for us here. That's a lot of cavalry, and all we have is archers. If only Boromir's horn wasn't going to go down. And there's a battle wing as well. This is brutal. Oh god. And our army is decimated. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you build pikemen and you keep your pikemen with your army. If you just build an all archer army, that is going to happen to you. It's not pretty. So we got a level five battle wagon now, and he still he managed to save most of his guys, and he can sit him next to this thing. He does use his horn, but Boromir is still taken out. Having this heroic statue here is really hurting us. Without all these archers, all these Merkwoods are getting bonuses to uh, attack. You never want bonus to attack Merkwoods. And Green sends an Elrond of his own. Green's doing a very good job here. Backing up his teammates in the right times. And attacking with his teammates in the right times, I feel. Him in orange. Seems like they're timing their attacks pretty well. Dwarves have just been trying to push through the entire game, which is not a bad thing. Meanwhile... Urukai are actually pushing forward across the map. Urukai's army is actually quite fearsome. There are a lot of goblins here, but I don't feel that was, that amount of goblins can fight this amount of uh, Isengard troops. And once again, the 
cavalry army gets into our base. I would really like to see some pikemen for myself, but I'm so focused on getting silverthorn arrows. Oh, I do have some pikemen. And they also have armor and weapon upgrades? Yeah, apparently I have armor and weapon upgrades, so at least that's something. And I do manage to get next to these guys. They will take up the stables. So that helps at least. I have upgrades, as where some people don't actually have upgrades. Most people don't have upgrades, which is weird. You'd expect by now green might have silver thorns, but they do not. Which is probably for the best for us, I would imagine. Last thing we want is a army of silver thorn arrowed archers at our doorstep. Dwarves seem to have their fire arrows though, as you can see there. So they still have their little forward outpost. We have yet to break that. Urukai though, managing to break through. Apparently these axe throwers are actually pretty good against these guys. They're probably not very tanky, but... Ooh, this, I don't like this. With a arrow volley power, this giant clump of troops, you don't want to do this. Arrow volley power would kill most, if not all of these troops. Especially don't have, since they don't have heavy armor. They do have leadership at least, so they will have some of those. Wildman's being summoned here from uh, the goblins. Procto summoned some from the flank. There's a glow from here over here, here as well. Jeez. I just butchered that sentence. So the Urukai army may be killed here. Possibly. It sounds like Lurch just died. So yeah, that's not good for him. Oh. It looks like with the help of a tornado from our Elrond, who's apparently already level 7, we are managing to push through and kill, uh, kill up his forward base. Take back this outpost, which is rightfully ours. This is good. And tornado doing its job. Candy Rush will now lose his last barracks over here. His Hollow Warriors, but he still has his tunnel. We need to take out this mindjack quickly. And yeah, Isengard is all but dead. Here's one of the goblin's new heroes. I think it's the only goblin new hero. He has a battle rage. Uh, he basically has scavenger. So anything next to him, he gets money for, kills or whatever. And he gets half trolls and goblins experience. He's already level 10. He leveled up quickly. And that is Azog. Azog the Defiler, I believe. Supposed to be the guy from the movie who rides the ward, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly not. Maybe that's someone else. They're all zogs of some kind. Yeah, the eagles. Eagles should be able to take out King Dane with no trouble whatsoever. Although he does have that. Uh, Beast Slayer Arrow. If he just used Beast Slayer Arrow, I'm surprised he didn't do more. The eagles in this patch are not, uh, not giant flying, undestroyable fortresses like they are in 1.06. <laughs> they do die fairly quickly to arrow fire, as they should. I miss the golden days. Green and orange. Got pretty, pretty big force building. Dwarves are rebuilding their force as well. And goblins managed to get their upgrades on their goblin warriors. The goblins may have done a lot better if he would have switched to, uh, say, half troll marauders and spider riders mixed with some cave trolls in there. Also, since this is a uh, Res of the Witch King, they do have a new unit, half troll swordsmen. So actually, they could build those in place of that. I didn't think of that because I forgot they existed. So half troll swordsmen are pretty good. Campaign points 88 though. These are 72. I guess it's not a car it's not a complete carbon copy of patch 1.0 because that's not how they are command point wise. This is their uh, special unit. Summons a little brood of three fire drake mini fire drakes. It's uh, interesting. So yeah, I guess some changes have been made to this patch in comparison to 1.00. 
So maybe any of my comparisons have been false. But some things are true. Warmer's Horn is going to be very, very bad for us. They're very bad for them here. So not fire back. Although these guys don't seem phased. And these guys just got here, so they won't be phased. And there's a level 5 enemy owner on there. But it looks like we're actually making ground here. Managing to push up into their, uh, their doorway. Although there is some cavalry coming, as usual. These cavalry are very destructive on us. And blue actually breaks through as well. Over here in the middle. So simultaneous attack. And they've done pretty good damage to the enemy fortress here with the Elrond and Lorcan combo. Also an eagle. He potentially might lose his fortress, although I don't think so. I would have liked to see this uh, tornado head towards the fortress. I see why he's doing it. I mean, using it on an army is great, but he just went past everyone. You can control this tornado. <laughs> you really should have microed that tornado a little better, but you know. Not the biggest deal in the world. Generally speaking, you like to just set it on top of a uh, fortress and let it sit there do damage. Like if you summon it on an army, move it over there and just left it there. That would probably be the best use of that. And the goblin's forward base is also being destroyed by the Urukai. Not sure why Lurks is in bow mode, but you know. Because that bow does massive root. Massive damage to structures. He's also not getting his leadership bonus for all his troops up here, which is probably what you want. And summon Ents. So the blue elves from our team summons Ents. And Bonsai's fortress is probably going bye bye here, as is the rest of his base. So this game is completely shifted from uh, them harassing and destroying our stuff to us just completely wrecking their base. So this is good. I like seeing this turn around. I haven't done a whole lot for my team from what I've seen. But I do have uh, silver thorns and arrows and... Silver thorns are arrows. I meant uh, upgrade. Uh, weapon and armor. So I do have some stuff, but like compared to my teammates, I'm not doing that well. Not really well played by me. There's a Sarm on here as well, level 6. Level 10, he gets that Thunderbolt. That's pretty good. This Worm Tongue ability at level 4 is very good. He gets control of an Italian or whatever. That's a powerful ability. Yeah, the fortress is gone here. And Isengard managed to take everything here. Except for this building rubble. Which will eventually rebuild. Here's the enemy. No, those are just berserkers. They looked a lot like the the special unit of Urukai. Prince Brand is no match for these Urukai. Mixed with arrows. And then this King Dane still has a, still has a second heal, I believe. Target units, 15 damage armor. No, he doesn't actually have a heal. No, it says heal target units. So no. So yes, dwarves do still have, still have two heals in this uh, patch. Ooh, Haldir not quite making it out. He's a good arrow volley. Did pretty good damage there. And Tom Bombadil some top after that. So we still have control of their front. This really needs to go. Uh, green will be pretty much crippled production wise. He has a barracks back here. But uh, he can't build uh, Mirkwoods until level 2 barracks. If he wants that. Looks like somebody used dwar dwarves use a barrage. Killing some troops. 
but not enough troops. There still are quite a few. Goblin Fortress is here. It has a lot of arrow towers, but not much else. It doesn't even look like goblins can produce uh, troops of any kind. And Ents being summoned on the men's fortress. It's looking like the men will lose their fort because I don't see any way for them to defend us. Ah, some knights of excellent use of the uh, the power from the fortress of Isengard, the wizard's tower. He actually manages to kill two of the ants, wounding the third. And Gandalf should be able to finish off this last end, but I think he will lose his fortress. Rebuild goes off from the men. We only have one rebuild, so that was his rebuild. And he actually saves it. Quite impressive. Here is equals to trying to assault a fully arrow tower fortress. Not gonna work too well, I'm afraid. But there is a tornado sitting onto it. This is the special unit of the elves, the Nordor warriors. Fifty percent damage to armor. A bard, so they can switch between sword and uh, bow. It's pretty cool. This could potentially be very disastrous. Urkai loses all his axe thrower people. But he has the bulk of his forces, albeit very wounded. Because he has heavy armor and leadership, and he can live through that arrow volley without much trouble. And uh, something is attacking here. Glorfindel's speedy ass just got in there, destroyed the fort, and he's getting out. We tried to stop him, but to no avail. Uh, my human partner is making Knights of Dol Amaroth very strong. They're their special unit and they're very quick and very strong. They get a glorious charge basically of Theoden and they give a cavalry buff to cavalry next to them. So they're pretty insane. I've seen them take out forts. Literally like two battalions of them can kill a fort in like 10 seconds. It's outrageous. If you are chanting, whatever you rally and call. So the goblin war, uh, fortress is very hurt. It's down to 50%. Seems there is an enemy Elrond in that area. So it's not the artillery, you know. Yep, there he is. He's level 9. So they're not out yet. Somewhere Ents have been summoned. On my fortress this time. So I possibly will lose my fortress here. I'm not building any troops, probably because I'm a uh, population locked or whatever. No point. Over. Well, I guess here we can see the knights of Dol Amroth. And there you go. See how much damage you do. This is not war chained, by the way. Or, or They should be able to kill these, no, no troubles. Although I do lose my fortress in the process. So that sucks. We, our team has lost two fortresses. And it sounds like more ants have been summoned. Yeah, here's more ants. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't have walked my ants so close to the fort. Or at least turn them into melee mode. Doing this doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're going to be right next to it, it's better to go into melee mode because it's just better. But, uh, okay. Hobbit's being summoned to try and kill these ants off. He wants to save this fortress at all costs. And it is basically three players against four at this time. Uh, I don't see anything from uh, the first guy. Who should be right here? I forget what color he was. Goblin's building a second fortress. 
because he still has his original one. And the siege on Uruk or Dwarves begins. Isengard and the men. No one in here. Mount Giant. He does have pikemen here, so he should be able to dispatch this pretty quickly. Golden Fort goes down. He may have just demolished it, but it would have died nonetheless. There's too much stuff here for him to stop. Dwarves will lose control of his hero. <laughs> Worm Tongue has taken control of a Dwarven hero. Or at least it looks like it, but uh. These insane guys actually killed King Dane pretty quickly. Saruman's in a lot of trouble. These guys should really help him. Nope. Okay. Wow. So just one hit on the guy. Tons. They're not... They still die pretty quick. You know, they're not the best thing ever, but look at that. If he had rallying call, this fortress would be done already. I've lost to that strategy, just somebody built up to these and then just rushed my fort and I couldn't do anything. They were too too quick and too strong. Not a unit I particularly like in the game. But I don't play Whereas the Witch King anyway, so it doesn't really concern me. I'm sure there are counters, like uh, Pikemen, but they're pretty quick. So there's not much left here. Uh, I think some people have been defeated, actually. And I think it's just goblins left, from what I can tell. I mean, there's still a tree here, so I'm assuming there's elves alive somewhere. Oh, here's a dragon strike going off. So it looks like the dragon manages to get his full fire off before dying to these arrow towers. And then er, Isengard runs into it and burns to death. But that's fine. <laughs> and a flood to end the game. Goblins are dead. And that is the end. That was a pretty exciting game. There's a lot going on in that one. And it did shift from one side to the other quite rapidly. So that was pretty cool. I like to see that in games where one team is losing and they just kind of come back and win the game. It's it's nice to watch. So yeah, I guess I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll see you in the next replay.